Am I crazy to want to use this as my main guitar amp? Maybe. I remember reading somewhere, and I'm not sure where I read it or where I heard it, and I feel like it's one of those, I've heard it from a few different sources over the years, so maybe it's something I picked up, maybe it's something I made up, or maybe it is an actual thing, but using small amps to push air for recordings is better than worrying about having gigantic, powerful amps, and apparently, apparently there are some engineers that on quite big records and I can't cite this because I think it, like it might just be a hearsay kind of situation but apparently using little amps like this is a technique that some engineers will will use because they'll mic up this thing crank it up all the way it's a tiny little speaker and it doesn't make that that much noise it makes it like a reasonable amount of noise but it's pushing air it's pushing this tiny speaker and it's vibrating air molecules and that's the excitement that comes out in the recording when you you know put it into the mix and I've tried this out a little bit this amp sounds kind of cool when you get a, some drums behind it and some bass underneath it and you double track some guitars it's it, they sound pretty neat so what I want to do is just record some guitars through this and see what kind of sounds we can get out of it. let's plug this thing in let's throw some mics onto it and let's <laughs> let's see Let's see what we can do. Like, am I crazy? Am I crazy to want to use this as my main guitar amp? Maybe, but the best thing to do is just like plug it in and find out because what's the worst that's going to happen? It's going to sound like shit. <laughs> what's the best that's going to happen? It could be the guitar, the, the, it could be the guitar tone. Let's see what happens. <laughs> So right out of the gate, one of the major problems with this amp is that when you turn it up, it shakes uh, a lot. When you sit it down on the table and you turn it all the way up, it, it dances forward ever so slowly. And that's a real problem because then it's just pushing into the microphone that's in front of it or it's going to run away from you and fall off your table entirely. So there's a couple things we can do in this situation. We could build an enclosure for it, but the problem is we're gonna have to raise it up pretty high, even with a short microphone stand. And it's gonna have to be a long enclosure because we want to put a mic that's off the amp as well so that we can get some of the uh, some of the air molecules as, they, as they're moving away from the amp. We could also tape it down, which I don't know. I don't know if I wanna put tape all over my desk just to have the thing right beside my ears. I also want to keep it back off a little bit so there's no spill from the headphones. The third idea that I had for this little thing is we're just gonna take it and we're going to put it on my bed. I'm hoping that what this will do is it will stop the thing from shaking around too much because it's got a soft cushiony space and this will eat up a little bit of the possible reflections that will come from the ceiling bouncing back. Um, I'm hoping that this will make for a cool sound so I'm gonna set up a couple microphones over top of the amp on the bed and hope maybe just maybe this could be a cool way to isolate the amp from the rest of the recording and keep it from shaking around and getting that gnarly shaky clattery sound that I got the first time that I tried playing around with it let's see let's see if this works Okay, so there's a few things that we're gonna to wanna to keep in mind. Number one, you want to keep your patch cable length under 20 feet. If you get over 20 feet, we start running into issues of the graded signal from your guitar to your amp, which will come through as uh, radio noise and 
just, just going to sound bad. It's going to be shitty. So we want to keep under 20 feet. What I've done is I've taken two 10 foot patch cables and I've split them with a DI in the center. This way we can take the clean DI signal of the guitar. If anything goes wrong with the amp tracks, the, the live mic tracks, we can always reamp the guitar later or we can use amp simulators to clean up the tone or if we need to add frequencies or a sound to certain parts of the song we have the clean DI tracks which we can then use to reamp at any point so if this, if this doesn't work we have the tracks done and we don't have to re re redo guitar we can always just reamp or put some amp sims on them now I've put 157 right close to the grill um, that's a very like typical guitar amp sound 57 right on the right on the grill i have mine directly over the middle of the cone to try to get as much high end as possible out of it um i think that that will help i also have an audio technica 2020 um above the above the amp it's about 14 inches above the top of the grill um we can move that around once i plug it in and get some guitar sound coming out of it we can see if it needs to be closer further away and hopefully a blend between the two will make a very cool guitar tone. Now I haven't mic'd this amp with the backed off mic yet. I've only done the close 57. So I have an idea of what the close 57 is gonna sound like, but I don't know what the condenser microphone off of the grill is gonna sound like. So I'm actually pretty excited to see what kind of tones we can get out of that. So I'm going to get the tracks active and start playing around with the sounds and see what each one sounds like and which if we need to make any adjustments to microphone placement and if this is going to be a good guitar tone or not. I kind of think it's going to be a good guitar tone. So, like I think it's going to be surprisingly a good guitar tone, but let's find out. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got the session set up for the guitars. Now, the first thing that you should notice is that I have gone to great lengths with labeling. You should always label all your tracks well, because you never know if something could get moved around, something could get lost, and then you have to go try to hunt down your tracks. And you named it Audio 76 because you figured, whatever, it's not the end of the world. Well, if something gets moved or accidentally gets shifted to a different folder and you need to find it again, having your tracks labeled properly is gonna be important. I go what the instrument is, what the microphone is, what song it is. That's just me personally. Um, once you've got everything labeled and you've got your tracks laid out, you can see that I have um, three tracks. So I've got a DI, the 57, and the condenser all coming in on their own independent bus going into their tracks, and I've made it twice. Uh, one for left, one for right, and then that's all going into an aux track so I can control the independent volume of all of those guitars together as one. And then that's also in a group, which is something you can do in Logic, and that's just so I can hide things away and make the sessions smaller when I don't want to look at certain stuff. Labeling your tracks is, is insanely important, and it's something that you should do for every, every single thing you record, no matter what it is. Uh, so now we're just going to turn up the microphones and see what kind of sounds we can get. Hopefully it sounds cool. Um, I think it will. I think it will. I think it'll be a fun guitar sound. Let's see what kind of fun this guitar tone is going to be. Mwah! Tuning is super, super, super duper important and is something that you should do literally between every take. It's crazy how important it is when you're dealing with guitars. You have to tune so, so much. I actually spend probably about half my time recording just tuning my guitars. Yeah, tune your guitars. It's really important. There's going to be a lot of tuning footage. Um, so let's just get that out of the way now and say tune, 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 tune. And then tune some more. If you think you're tuning too often, you're probably not tuning often enough. So, yeah, tuning's important. <laughs> So bummed. We were using these headphones to track the Quinzel demos, and it looks like the left side stopped working. That might not mean much to anybody else, but I've had these headphones since like 2006, and I've used them to track like everything. I've been using them for a long time, and I think they finally kicked the bucket. I think my good pair of headphones is done. I have to get new headphones. Uh, that really sucks. Aha! I was wrong. It was the input jack. It was the little connector. The little connector piece. They still work. Wonderful. I love these headphones. I'd be very disappointed if they were completely busted. Alright, guitar, guitar, guitar.
to give things a little bit of excitement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a different pickup for the second guitar. Um, that way, when there's the big chords that are being strummed, it's just it'll just be a different tone, and the the two tones together will kind of add to make that sense of like grandness. That's kind of one of the ways that you can achieve that. You could use a different guitar altogether. You could use a whole different amp setup if you had another little amp even, or if you had just entirely two different amps that you could use. Uh, I like to use this guitar specifically because it's got a very high gain pickup in the bridge position. It's got a Dirty Fingers humbucker, which is super high gain. And then over here, it's got a P Rails, which is, uh, I use the P90. Between the two, this has got like a more low end kind of sound, and this has got a more mid rangey kind of punchy sound. Um, this is also a slightly higher output gain pickup. So it, uh, they're about the same volume coming out. This is actually a little hotter. And between the two of them, uh, I think mixed together, they get like a really like big loud tone. And then when you have two guitars playing the same thing that are a different sound coming out of the, out on the left and the right side of the speaker, it gives you just like a much larger sound than if you were to just use the same amp, same guitar, do it twice, spread one left, spread one right. You're going to trick the ear into a larger stereo spread by using two different sounds. Uh, now you could, if you had a different guitar that had different pickups in it that you like, you just switch up your guitar, do something different. That's what I like to do anyway, it works. So is this the best sounding amp that there is? I don't know if that's easy to say definitively. It definitely sounds pretty good considering that it's a tiny little $50 three inch speaker <laughs> that you could clip onto your belt and take with you places. I really like the way that this guitar sounds. Once the stereo image is stacked together, it has like a really, really cool, big, energetic sound. I like it. I'm gonna use it on more of these songs. I think it's, you know, we're working within our environments. I say, go for it, give it a try. Maybe you can get some even cooler sounds. I think I wanna put some pedals through it, some weird sound effects and see if we can make some sort of really, really strange noises with it to, to use as like texture profiles. But I don't know, I like this. Do you like it? Do you think this is a good sounding amp? Would you use this in one of your songs? Let me know. I want to know if you guys would do it because I think it's really, really cool and I'm all about this little amp. I think it sounds sweet. I'm going to go finish up the rest of the rhythm tracks for this song. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I don't know. I think it's I think it's pretty sweet. You should try it out. Plug it in and try it out. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!